Hi, so I'm sure quite a few people will recognise this. It is actually a, a Manchester dynamo. It's one of the earliest forms of dynamos. We put a permanent magnet in there and spin it because we've got two coils here on this armature. Of course, we get a rotating magnetic field going north, south, north, south, and this thing will generate, and we can generate a considerable amount of power, and all I'm going to do is light up an LED. So we connect our LED to that. There it's our magnet. Now this is magnetised north-south along those edges. We pop that in a drill. And sure enough we'll be able to get that to light. There you go. No problem at all. Now that is how we understand a dynamo to be or a generator to be. We have something that we can rotate and because we've got the magnetic field cutting those wires then we get generation. Because remember Generation occurs in any electromagnetic device where we have a length of wire moving through a magnetic field at a speed. It's exactly the same thing if the magnetic field moves around or if the wires move around the magnetic field. It's the cutting of the lines of force through the wires that actually generate. So the length of the wire, the strength of the magnetic field and the speed at which it turns or moves through is going to dictate how much that generates. Now, the rotary generators of that type are very common and very easy to um, replicate and understand. However, there is another kind of generator. Just like we have a rotary motor and we have a linear motor, we can have a linear generator. Now, these were tremendously popular a little while ago in things like the shaker torch. You basically have a hollow pipe with a coil around it, and in the center there, we have a bunch of magnets. And as we move those magnets up and down, then we actually get a linear generator. And again, if we connect our LED to this, give that a shake, we'll be able to get that to light the LED. There you go. And this was used in the shaker torches, so that shaking was stored on a capacitor or a supercapacitor, and then used to light the light. So linear generators are the reverse of linear motors in the same way that rotary motors are the reverse of rotary generators. Anything that can cause a magnetic field to cut a line of copper wire at a speed is going to generate and that includes these things, speakers. Speakers are in fact a linear motor. They're a coil in a magnetic field and when we put a current down that coil it causes this cone to vibrate against the fixed magnetic field, giving out what we call sound because the air is being pushed by the cone. So that's a motor, a linear motor. And equally, we can turn that into a linear generator. So if I just straightforward connect this to my coil in my loudspeaker, and we don't need to do anything else apart from connect it up. There we go. <laughs> and we tap that hard enough, that LED will light. Now, <laughs> it's not producing very much. It doesn't produce very much because the coil's really small. And the magnetic field is really small. The only thing we could change on that, if we were to use one of these as a generator, is the speed. Now, of course, I'm tapping it relatively slowly. If I were to tap that quickly, five or six hundred times a second, we'd actually get quite good generation. <laughs> Nobody's that good on the drums. Now, I've got a number of ways I can do this. One way is to literally hit it with a stick. Just get a big stick and whack it fast enough and it's going to generate. Another would be to hit it with sound. We could hit that with sound and use this to make the thing vibrate in and out. And that would do it as well. And there is another way. We can use that rotary magnet that we've had. Well, I've got a magnet again here, the same as the um, dynamo, the Manchester dynamo, where it's north on this part, south on this part. So if I stick a magnet on here with the north side facing up and spin it, then the frequency of vibration of this will be equal to the speed that the motor turns. So let's put a magnet on there. Now as I spin this no. magnet above that magnet, what's going to happen is the magnetic field here is going to push and pull on this magnet beneath it and the time will be the rotation of the drill that I'm using and that should like this.
Okay, that's kind of cool, actually, it really is. So, a speaker, remember, is just a linear motor. Now, all motors can be made into generators, and so we can make the speaker into a generator just by doing those things. Now, it's governed by the same principles that motors and generators are governed by. Now, we want to make this stronger. Then we either need to put more turns of wire in there, so remove the voice coil and then turn more wire, make it a stronger magnet, or get a much faster vibration going on it, and then it's going to generate a reasonable amount. Now, there's quite a few videos kicking around on YouTube, and I've been asked to look at them. And there are various things where people have been taking speakers and doing weird things with them. One thing is to wrap another coil around here. That actually doesn't do anything. And then another one is to snap a magnet in half and put the two halves of magnets and then two other larger coils on there and wire it all together. Again, chances are that's not actually doing very much, because remember that actually has to be in a moving magnetic field. So the coil around here is static. When they have the ring here and put coils around there, they're static as well. So they don't do anything apart from look fancy. So the chances are when you're watching some of those videos, um, you're really just being trapped to a bit of clickbait. It's uh, highly unlikely that they're actually producing what they say they will produce. If you're seeing something where a method has been brought out to increase that vibration, and we did a video that, of that, remember, we put a um, piece of wood onto the cone and we let the cone vibrate in the wind. Equally, it vibrate on a um, bridge or on bridge cables and just a whole lot of things where you will get vibration. High frequency, strong vibration is certainly going to do the job. If we made the magnet stronger, that certainly would do the job. And if we put more turns of wire, or if you like a greater length of wire, that certainly would improve the output of a um, speaker as a generator. Anyway, I was asked to look at that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.